I'm Marie Vilaris. I'm a quantum physicist and I get asked quite a lot about my journey into quantum so I thought I'd make a video giving a summary of what that journey has been for me. So when I was a child I was very interested in science. I liked experiments and playing around with science but then in early high school I started to find science and maths very boring and was not a fan. I much preferred subjects like English literature, history, music, drama, things that are stereotypically the more creative things. But I ended up starting to really enjoy physics and maths and I started reading quite a lot of popular science. Articles, books, lectures, ideas about things being in two places at once and the different interpretations of quantum theory like Schrodinger's cat and many worlds and that sparked my interest of wanting to understand what's actually going on because what I was reading just seemed really fantastical and I was like how can scientists not know what's happening here and so my curiosity was piqued by reading that kind of thing and also by reading about information and entropy so thought experiments like Maxwell's demon and ideas about how erasing information has a minimum heat cost information is a physical quantity and we can explain the arrow of time in terms of this property called entropy but then when I was trying to actually understand what entropy is I realised that there seemed to be lots of confusion and debate around those ideas and where the arrow of time comes from. Probably my first ever science-y, physics-y video was one that I made when I was 15. I was too shy to have my real voice as the voiceover on the video so I modified it with this weird pitch thing. <laughs> Welcome to our world. These are atoms. And someone commented that my photon that I made was scary. When I started to like physics and maths, I became certain that I wanted to take physics, maths and further maths as my A-levels. English literature as well, which provided a nice contrast to the science-y subjects I was thinking about doing medicine and becoming a doctor and I did some work experience in that as well and I was deciding between that direction and physics. I was continuing to read about physics, popular science in my spare time and I was like oh I have to take physics and actually understand these things. I really wanted to understand everything and I was really enjoying maths modules as well, the more advanced they got, the more interesting they were becoming. So I wanted to carry on doing maths. So it became clear that I'd apply for physics. So I did physics. I went to Oxford, which was very intense, especially second and third year exams. I actually learned quantum mechanics properly in second year and I came across this theory called constructor theory which was aimed at expressing the laws of thermodynamics in an exact way or at least that was one of the applications and I thought that was really interesting because I'd been wondering about how you explain entropy and the arrow of time and all this confusion about it and its connection to information for a long time. So I was interested to see that there was this theory of physics that was aiming to have a kind of solution to some of these fundamental problems with understanding these ideas. And the theory also discussed expressing what information is in an exact way and also unifying quantum and classical information. So those components all seemed really interesting to me and really slotting right in with the things that I was curious about when reading this popular science stuff. 
So when I was organising a fourth year project, I contacted one of the researchers working on this theory. So there was two main people, David Deutsch and Chiara Moletto. They happened to be in Oxford, so I was like, ah, oh, perfect, I can try and work with them. So I contacted Chiara, organised my fourth year project to be on this topic, supervised by her. So we ended up organising the project that was at the intersection of thermodynamics and these ideas about entropy and quantum mechanics and information. And then during my third year summer, I did an internship at a innovation consultancy. Big companies have these problems and then you use science to solve them. So the one I worked at is called Innovia Technology. It was really fun to kind of apply physics in these different contexts, like some of them were to do with modeling cosmetics, food, medical devices. And when I got to the end of the summer, fourth year, starting my fourth year, I was still really interested in quantum mechanics and thought that doing a PhD is the only way that I can really satisfy that interest. I have to keep pushing in that direction if I'm gonna be able to reach this kind of level of understanding of quantum theory that I wanted and yeah look into these ideas about information and thermodynamics. I decided to apply for PhDs but also at the end of that summer I came across the idea of quantum computing. I think I'd come across it vaguely before but I hadn't really thought much about it but then I came across the fact that you can program quantum computers via the cloud so this was with Qiskit, IBM's quantum programming language and anyone could do this and like sign up for free and run stuff on their quantum computers and then I was like whoa quantum computers actually exist and I could run something on it so I signed up to that and put a qubit into superposition and measured it and getting the outcome to that was really cool because it was like I've actually caused a quantum state to go into superposition and then be measured and completely randomly be zero or one as the outcome so that was cool and that's when I got more interested into quantum computing and quantum technology so I thought it would be nice to get a group of people together to maybe learn Qiskit, learn how to use it and solve things together. I thought I might as well just start a society to do with quantum information, which could encompass both the kind of foundation side that I found interesting, the fundamental quantum stuff, but also the technology and application stuff. So I set up Oxford Quantum Information Society. We became established in October 2019. So it's funny, it was I remember just after it officially got approved and everything, there was this announcement from Google, their quantum supremacy announcement in 2019 of having run something on a quantum computer much faster than a classical computer could run it. So quantum computing got a lot of media attention at the time and I guess that was the first time that I saw quantum computing enter the media. and. It's funny because that's also happened again a few times recently. So in the first term, I got a committee together and then we were organising things like a lab tour of a trapped ion lab and also a superconducting qubit lab. That one was led by Peter Leake, who spun out a company called Oxford Quantum Circuits, which is the one that I now work for. So that's a connection from <laughs> five years ago. And I organised talks discussion groups, flash talks, and also trying to get a group together to learn kiss kits. We ended up forming this kind of group where a friend of mine from the committee, Abhishek, was working with a PhD student, Ben, who knew some kiss kit and had been working with it in his PhD. Me, Abhishek and Ben worked together to create a intro to Quantum Computing with Qiskit workshop based on the Qiskit community tutorials, which were these nice activities for different things that you can do on a quantum computer and how to program them with Qiskit. So I was getting into the quantum computing side of things and also started this project with Kiara. And 
I enjoyed the project, went to my first conference that February, February 2020, which was in Germany, it was quantum thermodynamics for young scientists. So I presented a poster on the project that I was doing and that was cool because I realised that quantum thermodynamics was a much bigger field than I'd thought. Right after that was when the Covid lockdowns happened. My exams were cancelled, the only thing that counted from my fourth year was that project. I applied for an internship with a quantum software company, Riverlane. Ended up doing that internship that summer, 2020, and my project there was putting this operating system that Riverlane were building at the time called Delta Flow, putting it onto Raspberry Pis and other circuit boards as a kind of quantum education project to demonstrate how the operating system works on hardware. So different Raspberry Pis and circuit boards were representing different parts of the quantum computing lab. So I spent the summer doing a lot of electronics and coding and then made a video about it at the end, which is on the Rivlin YouTube channel. So that video is when I first used a lint chocolate as a model for a qubit, a lint chocolate truffle, which I've been doing a lot since then. <laughs> So my PhD was continuing to work with Chiara Maletto on this theme of quantum thermodynamics and information, in particular in the context of this theory, constructive theory. And my PhD also ended up going into a few other directions. For example, looking at what happens when you treat observers in quantum theory as quantum systems and try and resolve paradoxes to do with how you chain together measurement outcomes of quantum experiments and also looking at some aspects of locality and how information flow in entanglement works. I was doing my PhD in like foundations of quantum theory and I also ended up getting a part-time internship with IBM Quantum. I was working from Oxford with the Kiskit video team who were mostly based in New York. And my main idea and main project was the Quantum Paradoxes series, where the idea was to map quantum thought experiments to quantum circuits that you could then implement on a quantum computer and code them using Kiskit. In each episode, I explained a thought experiment, how to map it onto a quantum circuit, and then running it and also wrote some blog posts and code tutorials to go alongside those videos. So I did this internship for around two and a half years and summer of 2023, I went to New York for a week and recorded nine videos there at the actual Kiskit studio there. And so they're all on YouTube or on the Kiskit YouTube channel in a Quantum Paradoxes playlist. I was getting inspired by what to do next in the Paradoxes series by things I was reading about in my PhD and then working on them on these scripts of how to explain these ideas in the Paradoxes series then fed back into helping my PhD work because it helped my conceptual understanding of these different topics. For example, one of the videos I made was on quantum teleportation and another one on the EPL paradox and entanglement and doing the research for those is what got me really thinking properly about this local account of quantum theory, which then fed into the PhD projects that I was doing on that topic. So yeah, there was a nice feedback loop there and that's also what I based this paper on quantum thought experiments as an educational tool on was these activities that I'd been developing during that time. I was also helping other projects that were happening. So I, became a robot for the One Minute Kiss Kit series where we had bots that explained features of Kiss Kit in a few minutes and I gave some lectures for the Kiss Kit Global Summer School in 2022. Realised that it's a lot of work to prepare a lecture but it was a good experience and I helped with the Kiss Kit seminar series 
By the time it got to January of 2024, my internship finished. I wanted to focus on finishing up my PhD, but I still wanted to carry on making videos. So that's when I started posting more on my personal channel. I posted my day in the life video. Yeah, I was focusing on trying to finish my PhD, which I then finished in the summer, submitted my thesis, had my Viva at the end of August last year. And yeah, I had this idea brewing in my mind of wanting to do a Quantum Foundations podcast. I really wanted to make some content about locality, explaining this local account of information because I thought it was so interesting and clarifying and there's not really any good, both popular science kind of accessible content explaining it, but also technical content. So that motivated me to actually start this podcast project. So I posted that episode and then some more installments since then some with people in Oxford, some with people in other places as well. In September, after I finished my PhD, but before I started my new job, I went to a few conferences and then started my job in October. So this job is with Oxford Quantum Circuits, which is a quantum computing company. It's a spin out from Oxford, which spun out around seven years ago from Peter Leake's group, which is superconducting qubits. And the, so the company builds superconducting quantum computers. And my role is a hybrid role of partly research into quantum error correction and partly technical content creation. I always seem to end up combining research and science communication and kind of content on different levels of accessibility, be more accessible for more general audiences, but also technical content, that's clear. Alongside that, I'm still working on foundational projects, quantum foundations projects in my spare times. I've also been focusing more on my personal content as well. I've been making some reaction videos to quantum news events. I think it's just a strange thing when you're in the field and then you see the you see it come up in the news but I thought when that happens it's a nice opportunity to try and communicate what's actually happening. So yeah that's where I am now doing research and content in fundamental physics and technology in the quantum space. I've gone on for ages. Hopefully something from that is interesting for someone. Everyone's journey into quantum is of course very different and everyone has their own interests and things that can bring them to, to the field. If you have questions or if you have suggestions for other kind of life in quantum style videos that you'd be interested in, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll take a look. So see you next time.